Okay, so here are the parts laid out for our Shadow Runner robot. First step is to mark the center of the dowel so that we uh, can see the center point. Then we take the craft stick and mark a spot about three-fifths of the way back. Now we're going to hot glue with a nice healthy glob of hot glue the dowel to the craft stick and uh, what you want to do is use, a, use enough, you want to make sure it's going to stay on there well. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the square edge of the um, prototype, uh, solder, solderless prototyping board to make sure that as the glue dries it's holding the dowel at 90 degrees to the craft stick. Next we take our roller bearings, which are the same kind of bearings you find in inline skates, and pressing it onto the axle. Now, it's a tight fit with the uh, 5 16th of an inch dowel. Uh, you may have to wiggle it a little bit, and you want to keep pressing it down until you get it all the way flush. It wasn't quite there yet. And there you have it. Be careful when you push down. Don't push on the craft stick. Make sure you push on the end of the dowel. Then you take the second bearing and you uh, put that on as well. When you push on that, make sure you push on the end of the dowel and not on the first bearing, otherwise you'll slide the first bearing down on the axle. Next we're attaching our motors. The first motor goes on the rear behind the dowel on the short end of the craft stick and the axle of the motor should be facing to the right. It's going to run the right wheel. Also notice that the end of the motor axle should extend just slightly beyond the edge, uh, the outer edge of the, uh, the wheel bearing. You put on the left motor. Whenever I refer to the left motor, I mean the motor that runs the left wheel. Hot glue that on pretty strongly. Uh, you can splash a little hot glue up on the, uh, on the underneath where the motor goes and also up a little bit on the wooden dowel. Now, this kit that I prepared, I pre-soldered on the wires, and I also tested the motors so that I know that the red wire uh, will be positive voltage and the uh, darker gray wire will be uh, negative voltage in order to make the wheels move the robot forward. The, uh, the right wheel will want to be spinning clockwise, and the left wheel will want to be spinning counterclockwise in order to move forward. Here I'm peeling off the adhesive backing of the um, solderless breadboard and attaching it to the craft stick. Then you flip it over, dab a hot glue, and I have a little half round bead. Uh, you could use something else, but uh, these were convenient. That bead will act as a uh, slider for the front of the robot. Normally here I cut the um, traction bands from the balloon. I'm going to skip that for now. I'll get to that later. I'm going to start to assemble the circuit, starting with the relay. goes in about the middle of the board, uh, a little bit to one side, and it's, it's uh, very important that you uh, understand the pinout of your relay, and uh, you, need it, you need to understand that as you build your circuit. Okay, now I'm inserting two jumper wires over the top of the relay. These join the two different poles of the relay together uh, and crosswise so that um, if you have pole one and two in position, in the default position, normally closed position, uh, pole one will cross over to the normally open position of pole two and vice versa. Okay, next I'm putting in some jumpers. These are going to run power around the board. I need to do that in two places. And I use red wire to indicate that. There we have that. Now, uh, next I'm going to run negative power, and one of the uh, connections from that is from the battery holder, so I'm going to glue the battery holder on. I don't really follow the steps 
I have the steps memorized, so I, I'm not really following the order of the steps that you may see in a online or written instructions, but this should give you an idea. So I've connected to the negative power lead. I also need a little jumper to jump power to a second position on the breadboard. And now that's in place. So now that we have our relay, our relay jumpers, and our positive jumpers and negative jumpers, we can start building the circuit. Here I'm putting the diode in. The diode goes across the coil of the relay and uh, helps protect from flyback voltage when the relay opens and closes. Okay, this is the first of the two NPN transistors that I'm putting in now. You have to spread the legs of the transistors a little bit and just be very careful of the placement. Uh, it's described in the written instructions, as, but um, this is a little bit tricky. Also at this point, you want to make sure the flat side of the transistor is facing the back of the robot towards the battery case. second transistor going in. Again, uh, spreading the leads so that they will be easy to place. And there they are. Together, those two NPN transistors make up a Darlington pair, which can drive a lot of current. We use those transistors to drive the uh, voltage to close and open the relay. Uh, now I'm putting in the photocell. That is the eye of the robot and detects shadow when we cover it. And this little tube is a shrink tube, and we just use it to cover the photocell and block light from all directions except the top. Next I'm putting in the potentiometer. We only use the center and one lead of the potentiometer, so I kind of bend one out of the way. It, it also, that one that I bend winds up fitting in the central um, furrow through the through the breadboard so it, it doesn't get connected to anything anyway. What the trim po potentiometer does is allows us to adjust for different light levels in the room. This robot needs a fair amount of light in order to work properly and you'll see that when I test it later. It's It can be tricky to get it to trigger properly so that it stops and turns when you um, cover the photocell and then when you take your hand off the photocell or it's out of shadow it continues forward. If there's not enough light in the room you'll find it gets stuck spinning in circles which is kind of fun too. Okay let's build those traction bands. First you cut off the ribbed end of the balloon and you want to cut these very straight and you want to cut them just a tiny bit wider than the width of the roller bearings or wheels. And the reason is if they're slightly wider they'll tend to stay on better. Position Getting these uh, bands on takes a little bit of practice. I like to start on the roller uh, and hold it on with one finger as I stretch it over the shaft of the motor. Once you get it on, uh, rotating it a few times tends to get it nice and centered. So that's what I'm doing there. Here you'll see I hook it over the edge of the wheel and then hold it with one finger then stretch it over the motor axle sometimes it uh, gets wrapped around and you have to try again it can be a little frustrating I've done this dozens and dozens and dozens of times it's you know still a little challenging sometimes okay it's pretty much built I'm going to install the battery and then we'll do our tests. The red wire from the battery connects to the right side of the solderless breadboard. That's how we get power. You can see the right wheel move, moving and uh, I'm adjusting the trim pot now to try to get it to turn off properly. Right there I was double checking that the two leads of the photocell had not been squeezed together and, and, 
and, and uh, make sure they weren't shorted. Sometimes you have to trim a little bit of length off of the tubing. You don't want the top of the photo cell sticking out the top of the tubing. You want it just a little bit below the uh, upper surface of the hole. Okay, let's test it out. There it goes. Now you can see it's a little stuck in shadow. The room's not quite bright enough, and so it tends to get stuck. And I'm, you'll see me angle the robot up so that it gets more light and holding it up a little bit towards the ceiling lights. This was uh, I was working in a very high room where uh, the lights were very far from the surface I was working on. A brighter room, this, this would work a little better. But there it goes. It is working. Look at that little sucker go. Ta-da!